Good afternoon, Tony Dottino, uh, founder of the USA Memory Championship and the uh, president of Dottino Consulting Group. And uh, today I want to just uh, talk about the most frequently asked question I get is why did you ever set up a USA or create a USA Memory Championship? And uh, why did you ever get interested in memory? It's like, wow, why, why a memory championship and what is memory? Uh, so important to you and what got you started so i'm going to start by saying the first thing i uh, actually that got me interested in memory was really trying to learn about creativity and i went to a seminar that was being uh, uh, given by tony buzan who became my co-author of the two books that i had the pleasure of, of writing with him and uh, he convinced me that if we wanted to enhance the creativity of people, we needed to enhance their memory capacities. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in another Live with Tony broadcast. But for today, I just want to bring you through. So why did I create the USA Memory Championship? And what are some of the most interesting experiences I've had? So from that, uh, I began to learn more about memory. And as I began to study the subject of memory, I initially was one of these people that believed you know, were either born with a good memory or you missed those genes. So you had the genes or you missed them. And if you missed them, you're out of luck. That's it. You're not going to be able to do anything to improve your memory, which then therefore meant you wouldn't be able to do your create, improve your creativity. And I was like, but I wanted to learn more about creativity. I was uh, working at IBM at the time and we needed to improve our creativity. It's like, how do we innovate and create more? And, and better and it was like god for ibm that was like gee that was ibm computers and circuits and chips and boards and things that was the way we, we grew and then we yet we needed we were losing our ability to be more creative in our competitive industry and therefore we needed it so off went to memory and the more i learned about memory the more i learned there were things and skills that we could actually learn to help us improve memory at any age and so that was like what i called there there was hope for me there was like hope for people and it was important for people to understand these. And so as I learned these skills and I began to realize I could, I could develop, I could, cre I, could I could practice these skills. There were things I could do to improve my own memory. I thought this was a big aha because as I was talking with people, uh, a majority of people I spoke with felt the same as I did, which is, I don't think I could improve my memory and I don't think there's anything I can learn to do it. And by the way, I'm doomed to dementia or Alzheimer's or cognitive uh, failure. Uh, and the more I found that people were in that mode of thinking, the more I kind of wanted to beat the drum, beat the drum that said, wait a minute, there are more things you could do with your memory than you ever thought possible. And I had uh, Karen Pinson, who is my executive that runs the USA Memory Championship, and Michael Dottino, both fascinated by what I was learning and both wanted to be a part of how do we get this messaging out to the world. And Karen has just been amazing at her dedication and focus and really wanting to help school kids improve their work uh, memory. And so as Karen got to meet with mental athletes. At, so as we formed the USA Memory Championship, Karen was just enthralled with meeting kids in the different school ages and groups and wanting to see if that she could be a part of making a difference in their lives. Michael began to, uh, to learn from the championship that we had, uh, the different skills and techniques, which he's incorporated in the uh, online course we have, uh, Maximum Memory Mastery. So it was great as I had two people around me uh, that were fascinated by learning what we could do to promote the messaging of people learning to improve their memory. And so, wow, what a great thing to be able to have around you. And so off we went in 1997, we created the first USA Memory Championship. And why, why did I create it? Well, I wanted people to get this message and I wanted them to be able to see People compete, you know, I thought a competition would be great. I'd create the first one that would get you know, news media involved in broadcast. And most importantly, they would help spread the messaging of anyone can improve their memory. And here's a series of events 
you know, remembering people's names and faces. So that has become one of the most popular events. And the biggest question from that event is, how do people do that? What are the skills that they're learning that help them to improve their memories of people's names and faces? In fact, recently, two, do two doctors that are interested, can you teach me some simple little lessons on how to improve my ability to remember names and faces, especially of my repeat patients? How about listing, you know, a series and string of numbers? And so we had lists of, of, of numbers we, with strings of 500 and the digits out. We gave them five minutes to remember as many as they could. And we're blown away by the fact that people actually could remember all 500 digits. How about list of words? Can you, can you do a, a list of words? And, and people learn to, to do that as to-do lists and things that they have to remember. Uh, on their uh, essays or school uh, studies or policies or tests. How about now, this one always blew people away about deck of cards. Now, how do I remember the order of a deck of cards? And uh, really, that skill has been transferred into educational uh, history classes, English classes, uh, science classes. Like, it's like, how do people do these things? How do students use these to improve their grades? So. We, we developed these different uh, skills that we put on display in the memory championship so people uh, that were learning them could prove to others that didn't think they could do it that they actually could. And so we started in 1997 with our first event and we had more, more news media showing up than we had mental athletes. I mean, we had a line of people at a small conference room at the Park Central Hotel in New York City where we had uh, 21 people competing and we had probably throughout the day magazines and radio at the first USA memory championship. They were like, wow, let's see what this is like. And so we had a stage in the, in the hallway because we had no room for them in this little small conference room that we had. So it was an amazing feat. And I always remember uh, a reporter saying to me, by like, God, this is amazing. I had to come to see what this was going to be like. And I think you're on a topic that is absolutely going to be uh, explosive. 1997. Unfortunately, after 25 years of doing it, uh, it's explosive, but in a way that people are still apprehensive about their memories. And I best saw this uh, on an NBC TV program that I was uh, being a part of. And the producer of the TV said, you know what, we were in New York City, let's go out to Times Square and let's interview people about memory. And this is, uh, this is an experience I still don't, rem I still can't, I, st I can't forget, I remember it so clearly to this day. So we have the TV camera guys, the light guys, with the producer and the person that's going to interview uh, people at Times Square in New York City. And the producer says to me, watch when we turn the, the camera lights on, people are going to come like bees to honey. And you're going to see people just come right over to the cameras. You and I will be standing here with the, the host. Uh, I'll let you talk to the host of the show. And she'll start to ask you questions about the memory championship. And then we'll grab a few people from the audience and uh, we'll have them on the TV with you. And in fact, what you can do is tell them that you're here in New York City to promote the USA Memory Championship and see who would like to even be a part of it. And so off we went and we're, where we do the two first, where they have that stage, uh, where they have the uh, seats that go up that you see on TV all the time with hundreds of people sitting in that staged area. And off we went at the foot of that stage area and the lights come on. And as the lights came on, it was as the producer had said, it would be like bees to honey. And so before we knew it, we were surrounded by a group of people all attracted to the lights of the camera. At which point the producer announces, and I, I laugh at this today, I could not believe this. Uh, the producer announces to the crowd, we're here to talk about the USA Memory Championship and who would be interested in learning how to improve their memory. And you would have I, be careful how I say this. I used to say you would have thought a bomb exploded. I don't use that expression anymore. But you would have thought somebody would have said, yeah, run the other way. And here you were, hundreds of people that turned around and they scattered back opposite to the cameras uh, like the producer had never seen before. 
And so it showed, so, so shocked the producer, there's a tongue twister, so shocked the, the show producer, uh, it so shocked her that she looked at this and said, we have to kill this bit. This is terrible. All these people left when you wanted to talk about memory. And I looked at her and I said, that's your story. That's the piece that you ought to be putting on national television. We have so many people worried, and, and today in the year 2023, people are worried about losing their memory. It's like uh, the articles I shared with you over you know, the other day, all these different articles, all worried about people and their brain health and their cognitive fitness and cognitive reserve, all wanting to level, have some hope. I hope I don't get dementia. I hope I don't get Alzheimer's. I hope I don't lose. I have a family member who's got it. My good, I worry about this all the time. And here we are building anxiety and worry and being afraid of something that we could take control over and begin to learn different skills and techniques. And there goes the message of the USA Memory Championship 23 years later. So we advance all the way to the year 2023, looking to host our 24th event and giving people the answer. There are things you can learn and do that improve your memory. And so if you're interested, look at the USA Memory Championship website and drop down and look at some of the online uh, work that we're doing now and uh, give it a try and just see if you too can learn how to improve your own memory because I've proven to myself absolutely given the desire, the first the belief, second the desire to learn and third is to practice and watch what you're able to do in your own life with improving your memory. Well, this is another Monday. My goodness, the weeks go by. It's Super Bowl time. I've not done a good job picking my teams uh, this year in a small pool that I'm a part of. So I went with who I want to win, and uh, I'm out of it. There is no interest in the Eagles or the Kansas City Chiefs, from my point of view, uh, coming Super Bowl. And uh, my all my teams have kind of fallen, fallen apart. I thought the 49ers and the Bengals would do better than they did this week. Oh, the Bengals came pretty darn close. And it didn't help, help the 49ers to lose their quarterback in the first half of the game. So with that, uh, you know, I'll be up in New York by that time. And who knows if I'll watch the Super Bowl or not since either team is one of my favorites. Have a good one. We'll see you on Wednesday.